everyone. Welcome to the Burnt Brass Homestead channel. This is going to be a three-part series on how we travel with our own food. I don't like to eat fast food, so I don't want to be forced to eat fast food when traveling. I used to like eating at fine restaurants that serve quality food, as well as supporting farm-to-table restaurants. However, nowadays, I just don't trust the quality of the food anywhere. And I would rather much eat from our garden from our own animals as well as freshly hunted deer meat and grass-fed beef from small family-owned local farmers. I will demonstrate how little is needed to travel with your own food but let's first build up some trust by conducting a test to see how long food can last in a cooler with ice to keep the cooler at or below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So these are the Coleman coolers. They are basically identical in size, design, and insulation. The coolers only differ cosmetically on the outside. For the ice to keep the coolers cool, you have a few choices. You can produce 10 to 20 pounds of ice cubes from your freezer, which is a lot of work. You can buy about a 20 pound bag of ice for $8, or you can make ice blocks which can be reusable. In this video, I am going to see how long the cooler can stay below 40 degrees Fahrenheit using a 20 pound bag of ice, as well as some homemade ice blocks. To make the ice blocks, fill an old plastic container that once contained juice. I do not recommend the green olive oil containers because the caps are not leak proof, so stick to containers that are leak proof. Fill them with water, leaving enough head space for the ice to expand without bursting through the cap. Place the water in a freezer for a couple days. One day may not be long enough to freeze the water completely. It may actually take two days for the freezer for the water to completely freeze all the way through the middle. Here I am weighing the ice blocks because I wanted them to be about the same weight as the 20 pound bag of ice. However, the ice blocks only ended up weighing about 17.5 pounds, which was close enough for me. So this is day one and it's about 60 degrees outside. Now you should try your best to keep the cooler out of the sun when using it to travel with food. Leaving it in an extremely hot car is also not a good idea. Even though there is some insulation to help keep the inside of the cooler cool, extreme outside temperatures will impact the inside temperatures of the cooler. Now, something like a Yeti cooler that has much better insulation and is higher quality will perform much better to keep your food cool than these cheap coolers. This is day two. The ice has started to melt, but only by a little. This is for both the cooler with the ice blocks as well as that with the 20 pound bag of ice. The temperature is still below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so everything looks good. Earlier I mentioned that I prefer to eat food from my own garden. However, if you don't have a garden, you can just as well buy what you need from the grocery store or pack whatever you have in your refrigerator. Either way, it is better than eating fast food three times a day for five straight days when traveling. This is day three. Although it is clear that the ice is melting from the water in the bottles, as well as the water in the bottom of the cooler with the bag of ice, the temperature is still about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. It is highly recommended you keep a thermometer in the cooler to monitor the temperature. You want the temperature to stay at or below 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius. This is considered cold holding, high risk food. Although foods such as fish may require slightly cooler temperatures. Hot holding food preserves food by keeping temperatures at at least 135 degrees Fahrenheit, 57 degrees Celsius. This is day five. I miss checking in on day four. 
and the temperature inside the cooler is still, is still 40 degrees Fahrenheit, but the ice has melted considerably. If you are going to use bags of ice to keep food cool, you will need to make sure the food is in an airtight container or you will want the ice to be in a leak-proof bag. As you can see, one of the disadvantages of using ice bags is that it leaves a pool of water in the bottom of the cooler. Any food that was not in an airtight container would have gotten wet. This is day six, the last day of conducting this test. And as one would expect, the ice didn't last through day six. However, this is no big deal as you can simply purchase another bag of ice to keep the temperature in the cooler below 41 degrees. Please note that this demo was performed with outside temperatures mostly in the 60s and high 70s Fahrenheit, which equates to 15.5 to 21.1 Celsius. The duration of keeping food cool in the cooler will depend on a few things. One, what foods you pack. For instance, packing some frozen foods can help to extend the time the food remain cool in the cooler. Two, outside temperatures will play a role. For example, during the cool season, the inside of the cooler will likely stay cooler longer versus the hot season. Three, the quality of the cooler. For example, a Coleman versus a Yeti. Four, how often the cooler is opened. Five, the size of the cooler as well as how much ice or ice blocks are used. We travel with our own food, so I will share how we travel and cook food on the road in parts two and three. In any event, I hope that this video was useful to someone. Please like, share, and subscribe to help this small channel to grow.